Hey guys, welcome back to the jungle, Sprangatang here. Welcome to my brand new channel about mycology. Here, I'll document my journey so that we can all learn from not just my mistakes, but also my huge successes as well. Today, I have something very special. If you're new to mycology and want to take a step deeper, this is the type of thing that I would be looking into. This is a 3D printed mini flow hood that is made from matte black PLA. While it might not be the biggest on the market by far, this does come in at one of the cheapest options that I've seen for something like this. This is a 10 inch by 6.5 inch mini flow hood which is the perfect size for starter agar work or even inoculating a jar of grain. It uses a high quality, quiet axial fan that runs on 120 volt AC power which makes it super convenient to just plug in and let it rip. You can also use it long ways for agar transfers, as it's the perfect size for two plates. But, you can also use it upwards like this. This makes it so that you can work with jars or pour agar plates in a more sterile environment. This unit features a 99.97 efficient HEPA R sized filter. So, it will do a great job at cleaning up the surrounding air while providing a laminar flow, as well to push only clean air over your work. And as you can see here, you have more than enough room to pour 10 plus plates at a time, which is a huge plus. I just finished up a round of pouring a stack of 15 and it was amazing. And here's a video of my very first plate pour. While this is something that you can do in a sab, your contamination rates greatly decrease as you use a flow hood. Now, the idea behind a flow hood, just in case you didn't know, is that it pushes filtered air through each part of the filter in equal proportion. This creates a laminar flow, which provides a much more sterile air environment as opposed to just using a sab. While I'm pouring my agar, I make sure to practice as much sterile technique as possible as even though you have a flow hood, it doesn't reduce contamination rates to zero. Odds are, from what I've seen, if you're contaminating still after using a proper flow hood, then there's maybe something wrong with the technique, prep, or temperature that it's incubating at. I just poured about 40 plates on my first plate pour on this with this 3D printed mini flow hood. And it felt like I could pour another 50 at least. Thank you Valid P for this amazing opportunity along with my close friend slash mentor, Mycelia Limidae, for letting me test this out. If this is something that you'd be interested in purchasing, the link over to the Etsy where it can be found will be in the description. I'll have a discount code by next video hopefully so that we can all share the love and advance that much faster into the world of mycology. Now, I'll be going more in depth on this unit in the future as I plan to keep using this until I can afford to get a larger one. But let's get into the meat and potatoes of this episode. This is the start of our very first cross grow on the channel. This is a hybrid cross between two different species. Because I use a rack, I don't believe that these stickers on my desk make much of a worry while I do myco work. I still make sure to do at least two to three cycles of cleaning with Lysol and 70% ISO alcohol. After everything is cleaned and sanitized, you want to make sure your entire workstation is set up before starting. This will ensure that you're able to have everything close by and sanitized while you work, decreasing your chances of contamination. Today, we'll be doing a sporb swab to agar transfer. This is one of my favorite ways to inoculate a plate with spores, as it's the most clean and provides more of control over how many spores go onto the plate as opposed to using a spore print and scalpel to inoculate. Spore swabs are important because of the fact that some fruits don't drop spores, and some drop clear spores. Taking a sterile swab and swabbing the gills of the fruit is how you would get around that. When using one to inoculate, you want to make sure that you snake the plate with the swab while rotating. 
This will provide a, the most chance for you to get that plate to germinate. If you're interested in more in-depth information about spore swab to agar, make sure to check out my how to put spores to agar video. Link is in the description for that as well. Also, it is my first time using this flow hood, but I do want to try it and not tilt the plate away from the flow hood as that would kind of mess up the flow, I think. I'm not entirely sure how this works yet as I just got it and I'm still getting used to it. And like I said for that first plate, in a snaking motion back and forth, try not to hit the edges of the plate as that is where the contamination could be. back and forth and then once you get to the bottom rotate the plate and start over. I've also been looking into a technique called the grab and drag where I believe I'm not as familiar with it but I believe you cut the tip off and then you run it down in a line and at the bottom of that little squiggle that you run it across on the agar it should have mono carry-ons. After I'm finished up I make sure to put the swab back into the package and retape it shut. I plan to get a mini chip bag sealer as that will perfectly reseal your swab packs. But until then, this will suffice. Just off brand micro pour tape around it and that should be good. I myself use the Walmart brand Equate Paper Tape comes in packs of two. It's one inch by 10 yard rolls. They're not that expensive. And honestly, I use that for just about everything. Taping my bins or taping my agar plates. It's pretty well rounded. This is what it should look like once you're done. Make sure to label your plates how you want them along with tape them on the edges. I use a cheap micro pour tape. Other people use parafilm. Whichever works for you, works for you. And real quick before we go, I have a website that I just created giving you all the opportunity to support this orangutan love wearing my merch. Doing so helps me to turn this into my full-time or even part-time job. We have some really nice hats, shirts, hoodies, or even face masks so you can show your mushrooms you support me while doing your mycology work. I also have a Patreon where I post daily content about my grow, along with full informational fruiting content as I progress through my journey in mycology. When you become a patron, you gain access to my Discord server. This is where we can all create a great sub-community around these amazing things we call fungi, along with make some amazing friends in the process. On my Discord, you'll be able to get a hold of me with any myco-related questions. Along with this, we'll be doing giveaways, group grows, and trading genetics as well. If you ever need any help, I'll be on there daily to try to help everybody out that I can. Alright guys, that's enough from me right now. Make sure to drop a comment so that we can start doing a comment of the day at the beginning of my videos starting on Tuesday. Let me know what you'd like to see, what problems you're having, or just let me know how your day was. Have a great day everyone, and be safe out there. Peace.